kind of topic I wanted to talk to you about today was the price of Blu-rays, 4Ks, collecting in general. How much is too much, realistically? Now, if you're anything like me, which I'm assuming a lot of you are, looking by your comments and interaction that I've had, we buy a lot of movies. If you're anything really like me, you wish you could buy a whole lot more. Regardless of the lack of space or room in your collection, we are collectors, we like movies, we like special editions of films, but these type of things are becoming more and more regular and that's starting to affect me financially. You know, I need to look at uh, releases and go, do I really need that one just now? Can I wait on a regular edition coming out? Because the prices are really starting to creep up a lot. Looking at um, a kind of landmark moment last year when we get Second Sight Films' Dawn of the Dead disc. That was a movie that kind of deserved that treatment. It's regarded as one of the best horror movies of all time. It got a wealth of extras and packaging that it really deserved. Not every movie really needs that though. And a lot of the things with the limited edition ones are the fear of missing out, that dreaded FOMO, the one where you feel as if I've got to get that and if I don't, my life will be ruined, which is far from the truth. And sometimes it's hard letting these things go out of print. Sometimes it's hard not to make that extra urge and, and just get it. But financially, we can't buy everything that we want. And now it's becoming uh, almost regular to get limited edition of movies. And now it's becoming, which one do you not get? And how much is really too much for a set? Looking at the upcoming uh, Arrow 4K releases of Donnie Darko and Battle Royale. We've got Battle Royale just now, you can get it for 60 quid which is 25% off, I believe, um, from its uh, supposedly full price, and then Donnie Darko, which is £35. Is that too much? These are movies that have had releases before. Yes, we're getting an upgrade in quality. Are we getting the same in extras? We get extra movies with the Battle Royale set. We get soundtracks and things like that, but value for money. How often are you going to play that disc? How often are you going to watch the extras? Ultimately, um, there are some movies where I enjoy the extras, like um, 12 Angry Men. Every time I watch that disc, I jump into the interviews uh, with Lume and watch some of the extras on the disc because I'm just fascinated by the, the director and the way he conveys himself. And that's a movie that I feel I get great rewatchability of not only the movie, but of the extras on the disc. It's even got a, a TV version of the movie on there as well, another version of it. It's great, it has wealth of extras, but that wasn't overly priced. You look at the standard price of a Criterion now, which is getting up above £25, almost at £30. You take a, a standard uh, limited edition from Second Sight Films, £23 to £25. Things are starting to get a little bit more expensive. Even... 88 films are moving into that market now. The Young Master just came out and that was £25. You're getting a hard case, you're getting some postcards, you're getting a book and a poster, but ultimately, are these things superfluous or do you want them just because it's limited? Is it actually everything you want or what? Well, if you were given a choice, if a movie company was to release... Um, say the Young Master that just came out and you could get a choice of the disc at £15 and you'd get a choice of the limited set at £25. Which set would you most likely go for and why? If it's a movie you love and you can't live without and you love it so much that you want all the extras, I understand that. But if it's basically just the film that you're eager for, sometimes I would rather go for that cheaper option and be able to get another title as well uh, along the way. And because of this limited edition set and the fear of missing out, you have all these scalpers, the bane of my life, and I refuse to purchase from them if I can help it, who buy up these limited editions, wait till they've sold out, and wait until people are starting to panic and are paying more than the actual price for it. And it's not really worth that, is it? I have 
paid over the odds for some titles in my life. It's been a rare occurrence and it's usually something that uh, I'm desperately in, uh, wanting to get into straight away, but very limited uh, am I willing to pay the kind of prices you get on eBay these days. And just the standard prices of Blu-rays, which I feel £15 seems to be an acceptable price for me. It's not too expensive. I can understand the amount of effort going into these discs and because of the amount of companies that are releasing these quality releases, each month I actually have to sit down and work out what I can buy. Sometimes I'll sell something in eBay and get a little bit extra cash. Sometimes I won't. Sometimes I just need to let things go. Slip through my fingers. Yes, I can't buy Beyond Reanimator straight away. But maybe down the line I'll pick it up under £10 and I'll be missing a slipcase and missing a booklet. And will that ultimately affect me? Every now and again I'll look at my collection and I'll have that little uh, twist in my brain where it goes, oh, you're missing that. But ultimately, it's not something I'm going to think about again. And financially, looking at it, I want to support these companies. I want to buy these releases. I just physically can't. There's too many releases coming out now to really warrant wanting to, well, getting to buy them all. I don't know about you guys. I have a monthly budget, um, usually around about 150 quid and I can manoeuvre that into certain ways and, and, and push things forward and, and things like that. Like um, this month, I had a little bit of extra cash, so I bought April's, or is it May's? May's Indicator bundle that included the Columbia Noir uh, 3 set, and I got a 10% discount off the website. I'm kind of moving that forward so I know that May, I've got that uh, sorted and ready to come. Sometimes you get bigger months like February, I had to let several titles go this month that I just couldn't afford. And you know what? It's not really going to hurt me not getting these titles. I love movies. I love getting my hands on these discs. I love watching and reviewing them. But missing out is something that I sometimes deeply regret, but other times I'm surprised by how little it really affects me. Beyond Reanimator is out now. Um, and, you know, I think the, the cover's cool. I'd like to read the booklet. But I know that it's not really going to bother me too much. There's certain movies that I missed out on that I wish I had got. Um, Bliss, for instance, released by Eureka last year. I loved that movie. I would love a limited edition set of it in my collection. And that's one that kind of stings every now and again. But ultimately, the cost of collecting um, is getting more and more expensive and it's something that I'm really struggling with the idea of and I'd love to know what you guys spend a month. Do you have a budget? Is there something that makes you tailor back? Do you look at things that you're desperately after? I, for instance, create a spreadsheet of all the month's releases um, and then I start to weed out the ones that I don't have the finances to get or the ones that I'm not desperately after until I'm left with things that I really I'm eager to get my hands on. And I think it's important as well, with being a collector, uh, financially speaking, is to keep a little bit of money back for sales and things that pop up uh, every now and again, like the Eureka sale that just popped up out of nowhere. And I had to choose between getting a couple of titles from that or getting the host uh, limited edition set, which I really, really wanted. I end up going with the, the Eureka package because I got a couple of films for less than what it would have cost to get the full host package. What's the most expensive item in your collection? What's the one that you uh, spent the most getting? For me, I know exactly what that is because it's the only one I've paid over the odds for. It's the only one I went to eBay and got and that was the late Mizuguchi set uh, from Eureka. It was £40 when it came out. I think I paid 100 for it. Um, it's one that I really uh, wanted and needed to get. And it's, it's one of those few purchases that I've got that has, has been a, a really expensive item, but I'm happy to have it. <sighs> Financially, it's tough being a collector. It's tough having to uh, 
decide between which movie you want when you can't just get them all. But ultimately, I think these companies are starting to eat into their profits by creating multiple limited edition sets that really put the fear into you that you're going to miss out on certain films. It's a marketing ploy. It is. You get a little bit of extras, but ultimately it's something that I'm beginning to get a little bit jaded about. Not everything needs to be a limited edition set. And seeing a company I love like 88 Films, who've just released The Drunken Master, instantly announce another several limited edition sets makes me wary of where that company's going and something that I really need to keep an eye on. Just some more questions for you. I've already asked you what's the most expensive item in your set? How much are you willing to pay? What's the budget that you have for a month? Do you work off a budget? I'd love to know how you decide what you're wanting to buy if there are several titles that you're really interested in. How do you decide which one not to get? Would you cut out a limited edition in so that you could buy two other regular priced movies? Let me know in the comment box below and I'll see you next time. A man be filmed.